What is going on guys? Part two of how to present your patient and do it successfully. Let's get to the video. All right guys, what is going on? Lex here from the MD Journey, helping you succeed on your medical journey with less stress. This video is going to be part two of how to present your patient successfully. Now, if you haven't watched part one, I will put it up here. You can finish the rest of this video and then get to part one, or you can watch part one and then come back to this video. But both of them are gonna be really important for you to kind of understand from start to finish what you should do uh, regarding presenting your patients. So that way you just look like an all-star on your rotations because then everyone's gonna understand that, yep, that student knows what he's talking about or what she's talking about. So um, let's get to this part, which is we're gonna talk about how to present your physical exam as well as how to present your assessment plan. So I'm gonna try to keep this video shorter than the other one. So sorry if the other one was a little bit longer, but we're gonna start with the physical exam and you want to make sure that you start with the vitals. I feel like at least 51% of the students miss this one because we just wanna, we're just excited. We just wanna get to the cardiac exam um, for our chest pain patient. That's what we were talking about in part one uh, or our heart failure patient. So you wanna make sure that before you even start telling them who the patient is and or like what the patient looks like to you on an exam, I wanna say what their vitals are. Um, they'll tell you your, uh, your attending how severely sick or not sick this patient may be. Um, so start with your vitals. And um, every attending wants this a little bit different, so make sure you go over with them uh, how they want this part to be presented. But I'm gonna give you a structure and I'm gonna give you the other option as well. So first, you start with their temperature. And you always, usually always say the patient is febrile or an afebrile. If they're febrile, obviously, obviously say what their temperature was. If they're afebrile, then you don't have to say that they're 98.7. Okay, that's just, you know, wasting time, wasting breaths, and uh, you're just saying numbers. So, say, you know, on physical exam for vitals, a uh, patient was afebrile, then move on to their heart rate. Um, I like to do the last 24 um, hours worth, and so usually the EMR is able to like nicely track that for you. And most students will do what I tend not to like, which is they'll say, uh, heart rate, and this is just a little pet peeve, but I think most attendings start checking out here too, if you pay attention, which is they'll say heart rate is from 83 to 117. Um, just say that the heart rate was um, 80 to 100 teens. Uh, the patient was most recently tachycardic uh, when they came to the emergency room, but now they've been in the 80s. So you can also say, you know, patient's afebrile, uh, currently they're uh, not tachycardic, but they were in the one teens when they came into the ED. That, that's much, you know, you're trying to convince that you know what you're talking about. You would, you demand attention if you can say things that way. If you just report data, you're just going to look like a reporter. If you command your data, you're going to look like the manager that they want you to be of the, the patient. Um, so get in that mindset, okay? So they're afebrile. They uh, aren't tachycardic right now, but they were uh, in the 80s and so 1-teens. Their blood pressure, similar thing I like to do is I'll say the blood pressures have been stable to the, um, from the 90s to 110s over 60 to 80s. And then you can say they're uh, they're breathing well on room air um, and you just move on. You know, you don't have to know, you don't have to say their respiration is 22, or sorry, you don't have to say their respiration is 18 um, and they're just breathing fine and their O2 sats is 100. You know, that only really matters if it's abnormal. So ask your attending again, because some attendings may want to make sure that you know everything is presentable. They may want to make sure that you know actually to present it. So ask them like, how would you like the vitals to be presented? And try that structure out for the first time and see if they are kind of off put that you didn't include something. But again, you look like you're commanding more attention when you can say it like that. Because if you listen to your residents, that's exactly how they present it. Uh, and they're not doing it pertaining for speed. They just want to make sure they're painting the picture as what's important. So um, that's how you do vitals. Once more, patients was afebrile. Uh, they're not tachycardic, but they were in the one teens when they came to the EDs. Their blood pressures have been stable between the 80s and 100 teens, uh, diastolics from the 60s to 80s, and they're breathing fine, satting well on the air. So then you get into what the patient uh, physical exam looks like. So always start with how the patient looks. You know, if a patient is obese, that's important mentioning. If the patient's on a nasal cannula, that's important to mention. If the patient is asleep and like stuporous and they're not responding, that's important to mention. So you can say, you know, uh, in general appearance, patient is well appearing. Uh, they're not in acute distress and they're pleasant to talk to and they're alert and oriented times four. So again, you're commanding attention versus just saying the generic phrase, which a patient is 
you know, well developed, whatever, uh, well groomed, and no acute distress. That's, that's just that's just boring. No one wants to listen to that. So command attention. Be a little more not as animated as I am right now. Make sure you just command uh, each phrase, and and then move on to other parts of the exam. So you may do their H E N T. Uh, you may feel for lymph nodes if a patient complains of like weight loss or something. And uh, but let's get to some of the key ones that you'll probably talk about, which is like cardiovascular, your respiratory, and your abdominal. So your cardiovascular. This is again the boring way people. Uh, present this. They'll say on cardiovascular exam, uh, regular rate and rhythm, normal S1, S2, uh, no murmurs, gallops, or rubs. Like, okay, fine. You know, you, you did everything you wanted to, but again, you are now a reporter. You are not the manager of the, the, the patient. So you can say on cardiovascular exam, you know, they had a regular rate, they had a regular rhythm. Uh, I didn't manage to hear any murmurs. There are no, the S1s and S2s were, uh, they were fine. And then I listened for a carotid bruit. I didn't hear one. I also checked their pulses distally uh, and they're all two plus. You see the difference is that you are presenting things as a conversation. You're telling your attending, I am talking to you, like listen to me. But if you would present it with the format and the little like plug-in uh, phrases that we've learned throughout medical school, no one wants to listen. Um, so try to take a little bit of a creative route on how you present it. And my, my style, and you don't have to use this, is I just act like I'm talking to a friend, you know, act like how you talk to a classmate. You're not going to tell them normal S1, S2. Um, you're going to present the data just because you have to, but you're going to say it with a different uh, of a structure, just like how you naturally would talk. Um, and that's kind of my takeaway for uh, the presentation uh, regarding the physical exam. So make sure you don't include stuff that you don't need to. So don't talk about uh, their at and exam uh, if they had nothing related to this part of their head. You can obviously do it, but don't, you don't have to include it in the physical exam unless the attending asks you to mention it later. So cardiovascular exam, move on to respiration. Again, people will do cleared auscultation bilaterally, no wheezes, uh, rails, and um, no secondary movements. Uh, but again, you can just say, uh, I listened to the, you know, on lung exam, I noticed that the patient had um, decreased uh, breath sounds on the right lower lung basis, but the rest of the lungs were clear throughout. Um, and then you can just keep going from there. So keep the conversation on your abdominal exam. You wanna say, did the always remember, you know, listen before you percuss, you palpate. So the patient had normal bowel sounds. You don't have to include that if it's not relevant. Like a heart failure patient that may not be uh, relevant to talk about their bowel sounds, but listen to their bowel sounds, uh, then palpate, percuss as necessary. But you can say on abdominal exam, uh, it was overall pretty benign, normal bowel sounds, uh, no rebound tenderness, and uh, patient didn't have any uh, you know tenderness to palpation. Um, again, if we're talking about a heart failure patient, you remember you need to present the part of the exam that's relevant to somebody with heart failure. So using him as an example, this is how I would present it. I would say, Mr. Johnson, you know, on general appearance, he's a uh, well-developed, uh, slightly obese, and uh, is breathing, um, you know, mildly uncomfortably, uh, currently on nasal cannula. Uh, his cardiovascular exam uh, is slightly distant heart sounds, but regular uh, rate and rhythm, um, no, no murmurs heard. And then his respiration exam, I did hear some crackles um, on his lower lung bases, uh, and uh, he does have some accessory muscle uses. Um, with his shoulders. Moving on to the abdominal exam, uh, he was a little bit uh, distended and, he, uh, and then you just keep going that way. Um, I like to do head to toe presentation versus like body systems. Uh, most of it, it works head to toe anyways, but like your cardiovascular exam, you may also talk about whether or not they have any edema. But you get the picture, right? You want to uh, be very conversational. You want to present only what's important. And again, you want to lead them in your final diagnosis, which in this case, where a patient has heart failure, so you want to point them in that direction. But um, that's the physical exam. You want to do it in that structure. Then you move on to you know labs and you want to get to imaging. Uh, similar, I'm not going to you know beat the horse uh, on this one. You just want to say the important labs. You're you're in case your attending wants to know everything, say everything. But you're when you're telling your chemistries and when you're saying your sodium, potassiums, and whatnot, um, you can read them out and you can just say their numbers. You don't have to say potassium is 3.4 and uh, sodium is like 142. You can say 142 and 3.4. Everyone that's heard that enough time knows that one number is definitely your sodium, one number is definitely your potassium. Otherwise, something's severely wrong. And so, um, ask your attending: Do they want to know just the relevant ones, or do they want you to say everything? And if so, kind of expedite it and say quickly. You don't need to say their bilirubin um, if it's not relevant or if they're 
if their TSH was normal and you checked it, just say their TSH was normal. You don't have to like just report all the data. Uh, even some of the interns on my ICU rotation were doing that and it just took forever to present. So just try not to when you can. Uh, be as relevant as possible. Somebody may ask you what the data for the INR was if you forgot to mention it. You can say, oh, you know, you still have it. So you can say, oh, the INR was, you know, 1.7. So present their labs, do it in a pertinent way, only report the things that you think you need to. Again, that pointing them to the final diagnosis, talk about their imaging, um, and try not to read kind of the word for verbatim, uh, what the their interpretation of like an EKG or uh, what an x-ray said. Um, make sure you understand what it meant and then say it in your own words. Uh, Cause then again, you sound like you're having a conversation. So that is in a nutshell, the, the physical exam and the lab and the information. And then finally we get to the assessment and plan. So um, the way you start it again is you do your one liner. So from, from before, so from part one, it's your who, your what, your why, and your how. So who is it, what's going on with them? Uh, you know, or what do they have, which is like, what's their past model of history? Uh, why are they here and how long has it been going on? So Mr. Johnson is our 65 year old male with a past medical history of heart failure, ejection fraction of 15, uh, hypertension and diabetes, uh, who comes in uh, presenting with three days history of chest tightness as well as uh, lower extremity edema for the last three days. Um, regarding his symptoms, uh, his physical exam is history, uh, definitely point uh, to a picture of potential heart failure exacerbation. exacerbation. Uh, he had uh, an infection um, earlier this week, which likely may have been one of the causes, and he hasn't been very compliant with his medication or diet. Um, other things that I'm considering, I still am considering an MI, uh, considering a PE. Also, um, he had some mild tenderness when I pushed on his chest, so he may have some costochondrital pain as well. And so um, regarding what I wanna do for him, so. That is your one-liner. Um, before you kind of get onto your plan, you want to say one-liner, and then you add in like one more line, which is I like to phrase it. You know, putting together his history and his physical. I think this patient has other, and this is why. You know, given these situations from their history and physical, I think this patient has this. Then say at least two more things that the patient could have that you're still rolling out. So in addition, I think this patient could have X and Y because of this and this. For, you know, this is what I want to do for them. Um, and then you move on to your plan for them. Attendings do this part of the presentation a little bit differently. So you can either present as a plan or as a problem base. So for their chest pain, I'm doing this. For their blood pressure, I'm doing this. Or you do this based off of organ systems. So some people like to do it for, for their cardiovascular. You know, they clearly have the chest pain. Um, they have heart failure, exacerbation history. And so you answer all those. I'm gonna do it. Uh, I'm gonna present this based off of your problem list. So you start with the top. What's the most important thing? This guy came in with chest tightness and he came in with lower extremity edema, which we think is because of his heart failure. So I'm gonna say his first problem is heart failure, likely uh, heart failure exacerbation. So these are the medications I like to give him. These are the labs I like to order. Uh, move on. Next problem, he also has hypertension um, and his blood pressure was a little elevated when he came in. So I wanna make sure I control it um, and I'm going to start his home medication of this. Keep going down the list. Um, again, continue to have a conversation. Now you kind of pointed them to your diagnosis. You're just kind of wrapping in loose ends. Um, so add them to your problem list. If you're kind of confused on how to create a problem list, there was a great video that most of uh, my viewers enjoyed. I'll link that up here and also down below in the description, which is how I keep my patients organized, which is going to really help with this whole video, which is how to keep their vitals, how to keep their physical exam, how to keep their labs, and then finally how to design your problem list. So watch that video to understand kind of how I create their problem list. But once you have it, just present them. And then you want to wrap it up by saying uh, things like discharge. So even as soon as you admit the patient, get in the mind of what do you have to do for this patient to discharge them. So things like PT has to come see a patient that can't walk really well. Social work is going to have to see a patient that can't afford things. You don't want them to see the patient the day you want to discharge them because then it's going to take another couple of days to expedite that process. So you can say this patient's here for heart failure, but they don't also have finance to uh, accept their medication and um, they're having difficulty walking around their two-story home. I'm gonna have PT come see them. I'm gonna have social work come see them to, uh, tomorrow as well. That way you're treating them for the medical condition and you're you know, making sure that they have every, all the, the loose ends tied up. So if you present the disposition, you present their discharge at the very end, again, you're just gonna look like an all-star because it tells everybody 
I know this patient is, I know what they have, and I know what to do with them from start to finish. Uh, and you're gonna just kill it on your presentations. Most med students will spend a majority of the time saying unnecessary data, saying unnecessary lab data, saying unnecessary subjective and physical exam finding. So as long as you can create a structure from start to finish, again, watch part one if you haven't, from start to finish where you're telling their story, point them at your final direction. You say the physical exam that's relevant to what is uh, pertinent for that patient's complaint and then you show the labs that again are relevant uh, and you show your presentation or your plan in a way that shows very structured on what you're going to do and how you're going to send this patient home there's nothing left for you to do like if your your attending is going to be listening uh, majority of the time and you're going to do great on your presentation so if you guys enjoy this you know two-part series you want more questions or you have any more questions let me know comment below if so like this video again watch part one up here if you haven't uh i don't think it actually will come up here but it will be in the description um and um uh, I will also put the videos, uh, the other ones that I mentioned, such as how to stay organized um, on your rotations. Put that all together. Do great on your 30 year rotation. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If so, give this video a like and subscribe to the channel. And I will be seeing you guys on a weekly basis with new video content. But until then, I will see you guys in the next one. Take care, my friends.